Hey there, it's Gary Parrish. Welcome back. CBS Sports Ion College Basketball Podcast, where we sometimes discuss camel fighting dodo birds, leaky black. Ion College Basketball Podcast is presented by Jersey Mike Subs, a sub above. Matt Norlander is here with me. If you're watching on YouTube, smash the like button like you're Brandon Davies. You have consent, and don't forget while you're here, also subscribe to the CBS Sports College Basketball YouTube channel if you haven't done it already. Let's get into it. Really is... I think you know only one place to start, and that's somewhere in middle America where winning streaks and rankings go to die. Final score, Creighton 85, UConn 66, just one day, one day. After moving the number one in the top 25 in one, but but six weeks after moving to number one in the AP top 25 poll, the reigning national champions trailed by as many as 21 in Omaha. They lost by 19. They got more or less done to them what they just did to Marquette over the weekend. So the Huskies are now a three-loss team, just like Purdue, just like Houston. And when you take a fresh look at the bodies of work. Oh, a fresh look. What you'll find. A fresh look. What you're going to find if you take a fresh look, unless you're a goofy person, unless you're one of them goofy people who doesn't know what they're doing, unless you're a goofy, a goofy fella or gal. If you take a fresh look at the bodies of work, what you're going to find is that Purdue now, once again, has the sport's best body of work. Welcome back to the top of the top 25 and one, Zach Eady. Good to see you again. Dead leg, I saw you on, on X, formerly known as Twitter, last night, just before tip-off, predict that Creighton yeah. would upset UConn in the CHI Health Center. What made you so confident to pick against a team that had won 14 games in a row and just just over the weekend looked like clearly the best team in the country? Because good teams take losses on the road against other good teams all the time in college basketball. It wasn't even that outlandish. What? Yeah. What? yeah I, I didn't think it was that crazy. Now, UConn did get off to a 7 nothing run there. Uh, yeah. But... And I, I actually, I saw you on uh, CBS Sports Network. I would disagree with your definition of this game. Uh, to me, a trap game is good team, bad team, good team, bad team in the middle of trap game. I don't. I know you're saying they were coming off Marquette, so there was a lot on that. I would not define this as a trap game. I would define this as the back end of like a really tough uh, back to backer there. So I don't think like UConn got caught off guard. Also, Creighton was absurd. <laughs> I mean, Creighton was, dude. <laughs> <laughs> they're shooting last night and Steven Ashworth credit to him 20 points. We've got the box score up right there. Just an outrageously good performance from Creighton on the whole going 14 of 28 from three point range. I mean, they had their best performance of the season and, and well time there. And, and to me, we get to this kind of more on the back end of the combo, I guess. I wonder if Creighton almost has a, uh, has a three seed body of work at, at this point, but the, the turnaround parish, I mean, when these teams met uh, a few weeks back, 62-48 UConn win. Creighton had 48 in the game. I mean, it, getting 85 on its home floor, the first win in school history over a top-ranked team. Congrats to Creighton on that. The second time it's ever won against a reigning national champ. I got trivia timed on HQ Spotlight Tuesday on this, and uh, apparently the last time was sometime in the 40s. They didn't even give me the school it happened, but I was like, I'll say it was like UConn in 2015 after they won the title. Uh, not the answer. So congrats to Creighton on that. Connecticut is oddly, oddly 0-21 in its last 21 road games against ranked competition. The last time UConn won on the road against a ranked team was in 2014 when it was in the American and Memphis was the 17th ranked team in the country. And additionally, this was the largest loss, a 19-point loss for the Huskies. This was the largest loss by margin of victory. Trivia time! I wonder if you got this and they, if they gave it to you in the studio last night. The last time a number one team lost by as many as 19 points. When do you think it was? First off, first off, I gave it to them in the studio last night. You, you did not. People don't give it to me. I give it to them. Did you? Okay. Tell the audience. It was uh, earlier this year. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. You lose. I thought you actually had it. The no, last... I was just getting cocky. I was just getting cocky. <laughs> the last time a number one ranked team lost by as many as 19 points was UMBC beating Virginia by 20 in the tournament in 2018. Um, what are you suggesting? Let me let's stop here. For Are you suggesting UConn should have never moved to number one? No, not at all. Not at all. Okay. I'm suggesting. That's what, it, that's what I was hearing. 
Sometimes you get caught. By the way, congrats to Greg McDermott. I think this was win number 600. Um, no, I, uh, there was a lot of factors in the game, and uh, GP can obviously speak to uh, what a lot of people are tuning in for and maybe uh, <laughs> maybe strutting all over uh, over the Yukon corpse this morning. But I wouldn't do that. Uh, but, but listen, um, I thought that's, it, not my, that's not my style. It was a lot of it was Creighton, and in fact, credit UConn. They got it to ten with like four and change to go in the game. Tristan Newton, if you want a bright spot, I mean, he goes for twenty-seven, had twelve boards, and played extremely well in this game. Um, Klingon was just okay. They, you know, I, you can call that a, a neutralized situation between him and and Kalk Brenner. Um, but overall, Creighton's defense was tremendous. They didn't let Caravan become a factor. They didn't let Stefan Castle, who had four fouls, become a factor and really eliminated UConn's uh, ability to use its bench whatsoever. And that led to just a three of 16 three point uh, display from the Huskies GP. That was their worst of the season. And so a lot of confluence, uh, you know, factors confluencing upon each other there. Uh, yeah, it's surprising to see the team that's played like the best team in the country this season get completely sideswiped. But you know, sometimes this happens and uh, a great environment in Omaha. I was just as I was watching all this on, on Tuesday night, I was like, man, here we are right now. Middle of the season, like we're going to get to middle of June and just be aching for college basketball games like, you know, stop. Take a look around. This is this is great times right now before we even get to March. It's uh, it was a fun, fun night. And look at you. Not what all of 48 hours. And then we're back to where we were. Congratulations, sir. Uh, you got your Purdue Boilermakers back on top. Um few different things one on uh the trap game thing you, you might be right that might be the the wrong uh term to use what 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 i was trying to illustrate is they were obviously up and operating at an extremely unusual level over the weekend against marquette you would you would acknowledge that right yes, they, abso yeah I, absolutely okay. that's just i i was just uh picking it there that's all no no I, I i i'm agreeing with you um so they had to get up in an unusual way on Saturday, and and I mean they were shot out of a cannon, and I just to win at Creighton three days later, you were going to have to come with that same type of intensity and energy, and it's just hard to do that in back to back games. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. Um, on the O of twenty one against ranked teams on the road. Yeah, that streak. How well known is that throughout college basketball? I know it's well known now because it was just everywhere last night. How well known was it, say, last week? Uh, probably not that well known, but I I, I remembered last season uh, bringing this up on the pod and probably referencing it in a court report once or twice that it was it had been building that you because they took that dip in January and they just it had been you know since they joined the Big East they had not won a road game and in fact it had gone back to their early points in the Americans. So I don't know how well known. But um, it had been discussed at certain points. Okay, so we were in studio last night, and the uh, the incredible research crew, the back row as we call them, they uh, they they've got this in the notes, right? And somebody's just reading through the notes, and uh, they go, uh, "Lost twenty straight." This is before the game. Yeah, you kind of hadn't beaten a ranked team on the road since two thousand fourteen. Is that right? And somebody else says, "That doesn't sound right," because <laughs> it just doesn't. It sounds impossible. It does. Like, won like two you, national titles since the last time they won on the road against a ranked team. They've won two national titles. They've had multiple 14-game winning streaks. They've yeah. been ranked number one in the country. H how? Like, LSU, which is five and seven in the SEC, beat a ranked team on the road this past weekend. I know. <laughs> okay? This stuff happens all the time. Just accidentally, you don't even mean to do it. Like yeah. LSU wasn't trying to beat a ranked team on the road this weekend. I actually <laughs> think that they were. I were no, trying. I don't think I they were. Usually, I'm going to give Matt McMahon's group credit. They're going through it there. I think they were trying to win the game. I don't think they were. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they cared. Okay, I don't think. I think they're not LSU on somehow making it into the podcast. By the way, I, I, yeah, this is the first time we've got to LSU this season. It's, it's good to have them back. Yeah. You know, it's, good. It's, it's first time back since strong ass offer. Good. <laughs> <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you. How you been? Um, I don't think they were trying. I think that I think they're more interested in increasing in increasing their lottery odds. OK, um, but That's they good. did. They just looked up and it's like, oh, wow, I guess we just beat South Carolina at South Carolina. I guess we just beat a ranked team on the road. Anything else we can do that UConn can't do? Uh. It just like it is. It's it's a little bit like art. 
once upon a time, Arkansas used to go to the Sweet 16 every year, and then they just never did it for like two decades. 1996. <laughs> as first reported here on the Iron College Basketball Podcast. Okay, and that one just like made no sense. I know. Like if you if you'd have stopped in time and at, at some like after Arkansas was in back to back Final Fours and said you're never going to the Sweet 16 again for like ever, it, you'd be like it doesn't even make any sense. This one is like that in the sense that yeah. it it doesn't even, unless you know it's true. Unless if somebody presented it to you, you would say that can't possibly be true. It is an oddity. Um, they're going to have another shot because they got Marquette coming up here in a little bit, and we'll see if they can finally pull that one off and get it done. Uh, and this is also coming on the heels of UConn on Monday. Uh, it's been number one plenty of times before. It had never been a unanimous number one team in the AP Top 25. So this week was the first time. Then promptly it'll... Uh, It'll probably get booted from that. The poll question right now, by the way, for our live viewers is who do you live viewers think should be number one in the country or is the number one team? And obviously UConn, Purdue and Houston is in that conversation. We'll get to the Cougars in just a second. Any other uh, takeaways from the game or just the the doings that, that happened there on uh, on Tuesday night, GP? Well, the game was the game. Like you said, it's not like they were down 11-2 to start. They were up 7 nothing to start. They scored the first three baskets of the game and it looked like, okay, they're ready. Oh, wow. Here they go. And I, I don't know if you saw the clip, but um, before the game, you know, we were in studio and it's like, so who you got? And I was like, I guess I'll take UConn. You know, they've been playing at an extremely high level. And then we come back and UConn's down pretty big. And and I, that's where the clip was, where I said, yeah, you know, it looked like a trap game. And Wally Zerbiak is like, well, then why didn't you pick UConn? I yeah. And I, I, I'm being completely honest. This is exactly why I didn't pick UConn. Because Zoe, God bless her. She's the best. She, the second I say, I think Ooh, UConn's Zoe, no one, no, you say this, no one, Zoe runs our social media for CBS Sports College Hoops. So. She's a star. Yeah. All right. And the, the second I say on TV, I think UConn's 14 game winning streak is coming to an end tonight. Zoe's going to clip that. She'll clip it before I even say it. Yeah. She right. somehow knows what I'm going to say. Right. And, and she'll have it clipped before I even say it. And then it's going to be on social media. And then I just was trying to, I'm playing worse. I'm never playing best case scenario. I'm only playing worse, trying to avoid worse. I'm not, I'm not shooting for best. I'm just trying to avoid worse. And so, cause best would have been like, Hey, I tried to tell you idiots for a while. Watch what happens tonight. That would have been the best. Okay. I, but I couldn't I'll just risk- say that tonight on CBS sports network. I don't care about what it is. Just, just invoke that. All right. But, so I, I, so I was trying to avoid the, and the worst case scenario was me saying, I just think UConn's 14 game winning streak. It comes to a loss. To, it comes to an end tonight. And then UConn goes out and jumps to a 21 to three lead at Creighton. Zoe's done clipped it. It's been re- now I'm now I'm back in the, now I'm back in it. No escalators is on my throat. It's just, I can't, I couldn't deal with it again. Um, that is genuinely why I didn't pick. <laughs> okay, so you're doing it out of fear of backlash from, from viewers. Okay. That's yeah. That's, I've been, I've been, I'm, I'm dealing with self and your convictions and don't worry about your mentions. How many times do I have to tell you this? Yeah, I don't have any, I don't have convictions anymore. I used to have them. It, 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 it didn't work out for me. Feeling strongly about stuff didn't work out for me okay. so well. Hey, I saw this from our buddy, Jared Burson. He, he invented ESPN stats and info. He did not go ahead. He invented it, created it from nothing. Does not work there anymore, by the way. No, he owns it. And um, he, he, how about this? This isn't, a, I think I know what you're going to say. This isn't, a, this is a ridiculous note. It's, it's what Jared Burson was. This is the one about the teams in Nebraska. This is, this is a, what Jared Burson was made for. Yeah. This is, this is why, I don't know if you believe in God or not, but if you do, this is why God created Jared Burson for stuff like this. Okay. He said Creighton beat number one UConn by 19 last night. Nebraska beat number one Purdue by 16 on January 9th, and it is the first time ever that two different schools from the same state beat the number one team by 15 plus points in the same season. Nebraska, the home of college basketball. Put it on. <laughs> put it on. Put it. Put it, put it on a license plate. Put that on a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Nebraska. Nebraska, oh where number one teams go to die. As you rebuilt your uh, your top 25 and one overnight. Um, I pointed out uh, at the time it happened, this is true. Now Wisconsin's there as well. Most quad one and quad two combined victories in the country as of this morning. Purdue's got 15. UConn's got 13. Sitting there in third place is two teams that won on Tuesday. Creighton and Wisconsin both have 12 apiece. Uh, GP, does Creighton have a three seed resume at this point? Are they still maybe uh, sitting there as potentially the best four seed on the board in your opinion? I jumped them up to number nine in the top 25 and one. If you take a fresh look at their resume, that's that's where I landed with them. I, I and with nine you. nine equates to a three seed. Dead I leg, dead that. leg. We're finally seeing eye to eye on this stuff. 
We're five. Well, you're finally six. thinking that Creighton's a good team after doubting this team for like the first two and a half months of the season. So yes. well, well, they they gave me reason. I quote, I quote Gary Parish: "Is Creighton even any good?" Well, it was a reason. It was it's a reasonable question to ask sometimes, but not last night. Not last night. And you're um, exactly right about the wins inside the first two quarters. All of these teams. So there's really right now. Let's just bottom line this, then we can take it wherever you want to take it. There's yeah. really three teams right now that could reasonably reasonably be ranked number one. And I, agree. A, I, I, I think I think I don't think you're stupid if you rank any of these teams number one, Purdue, UConn, or Houston. You can you can do any of them. All right. If you want to say, hey, I don't care. I just think you. I ain't seen nobody better than what UConn did to Marquette. UConn's the number one team in the country. Fine with me. Hey, Purdue does have the best body of work. That's what the selection committee would tell you this morning. That's what they would tell you this morning. Fine with me. Or hey, Houston's got the strongest computer numbers. I'm, I'm sorry they haven't won as uh, many games in the first two quadrants as these other teams, but it's only because of a lack of quadrant two opportunities. They're equal with them in quadrant one. They've got the strongest computer numbers. I'm putting Houston at number one. Fine with me. It's totally reasonable to put any of them one or to put them in any order. But those are your one, twos, and threes. And now we can debate four if you want to. But those are your one, two, threes. And I do think the, the major difference right now isn't necessarily the loss column. Because we can get in there and and say, yeah, but I think you know one of UConn's losses is at Kansas. Another one's at Creighton. Those are better losses than the other team. I'm not disagreeing with you. If you want to get in there and argue that UConn's got the best losses of those three teams, I concede the point. But they all do have nothing but quadrant one losses. They're different, but they have nothing but quadrant one losses. So then I'm going to look at the wins. When you got the same number of losses and they're all in the same place, the same quadrant, I'll look at the wins. And right now, Purdue has seven wins against teams ranked in the top 25 of the net. Um, UConn has four. Houston has three. That's the determining factor for me right now. That's why I would I would, I would, would insist that Purdue's got the best body of work right now. They have uh, three more wins over top 25 net teams than UConn and four more than Houston. Uh, live poll right now has UConn, th- who... Who was your number one team? UConn, 34% is first. Houston, one percentage point behind, 33%. Purdue, 26%. Not to put other in there. There's no other nada. So I'm, I'm divvying up that 7% to the others. And that's actually a pretty split even across the board uh, vote there. Houston, let's just talk about them real quick here as before we take a break then because they're in this conversation. Beat Iowa State on Monday night. Um, Houston is almost at 90 straight days as the number one team in efficiency. Uh, at Ken Palm and a 73 65 win over Iowa State. It's the only time the season Houston won a game at home by single digits. Jamal Shedd is a first team All American, folks. Uh, at this point, if you had to make a ballot, there's no argument against it. Houston is a one seed, it's a top three team. It might be the best team. It rates as the best team. He had 26 points, six assists, and he continues to be tremendous there. Um, so it was two nights ago, but since Houston is right there in that conversation with UConn, wanted to at least uh, talk about the Kooks on the top here because. Um, they are not the, the way they, they continue to play uh, a style that just looks like an absolute pain in the ass to prepare for. And then to, to know that you got to go and, and go deal with this team for two hours seems like hell for every single opponent that they have to face. But I love I love watching UConn play. I love watching Houston play. They they have a different kind of style. That's why I love this sport, because different coaches have different philosophies. And the way Houston chooses to approach a game is different from a lot of other teams. And damn, if it doesn't work, man, they just they are a a force. They can be beat, of course. And the offense, if you want to say, well, do I want to trust that offense to win four or five straight games in the big dance? Okay, I'm willing to have that discussion, but uh, it will be an absolute nightmare for any team that that needs to beat them uh, from here until the end of the season. And I would uh you know, I don't do the power rankings anymore. If I was doing the power rankings right now, I wonder what Cobb will have when he refreshes them on Thursday. I personally, from a power ranking standpoint, I would have Houston uh, number one right now, particularly after getting a good home win against Iowa State and just seeing the way this team has just been relentless. And oh, by the way, not just is it number one GP in Ken Palm, but its efficiency margin is still pretty comfortable. Uh, it plays in the Big 12, so it could take some L's and it's not guaranteed to stay there. But if it basically plays to expectation, it will be the number one team in the country still from now until Selection Sunday. Um, After the game, because this was the ESPN game on Monday night, um, and it was a fun, I know it wasn't the highest scoring, best offensive game in the history of the sport or even in the history of the day, but it was a a competitive, fun basketball team between two undeniable top 10 teams in America. 
And it leads right into Scott Van Pelt Sports Center, and they go to Kelvin Sampson pretty quickly in the show, you know, back on the court, and it's Scott and Kelvin talking. And it was great. I love it. Like, I, I love Scott's Sports Center. I love it when, you know, he brings people on, and he's just, he's really good at talking to people on camera. Um, and like he had Dan Hurley on maybe the same night and Dan was great. That was wonderful. But so he's got Kelvin on and Kelvin just starts going on and on about Jamal Shedd. And it reminded me of like, I've had these conversations with Kelvin about Jamal Shedd veterans classic last year, very beginning of last season. Um, Houston played St. Joe's at the Naval Academy. I was on the sideline, CBS sports network, and we were at shoot around and, you know, we're just talking to Kelvin and, you know, his team's out there, like, getting up free throws. Into shoot around, they're just getting up free throws or whatever. And, you know, we're chopping it up with Kelvin and sort of like, hey, who have you seen? What do you think of this team? You know, what do you think of that team? You know, have you seen these guys? And we we settled on one team that was, hey, they could be really good. They got a couple of one-and-done players, but, you know, we'll see. They're young. And Kelvin sort of got on this little thing about one-and-done players and five-star freshmen. And he's like, listen, you know, I love them. I, I I got one here, Jairus Walker, right? Like I I got one myself, mm-hmm. but I'm just telling you, man. You you who he, he he was like, this is the way I remember it. GP, who's the best freshman point guard in the country? And I told him somebody, and he said, you know, just give me Jamal Shedd. I'll just take Jamal Shedd. I know he's six one. I know he wasn't heralded coming out of high school. I I'll just give me Jamal Shedd every day. You can take your five star freshman and let's go play. And I've never forgotten that. Because he went on and on from there about his parents. I just I never heard a coach talk about somebody's parents this much. He's like the mom and dad, just amazing people. And then when he was talking to Scott on Monday night, because it just again triggered all these thoughts, he said something along the lines of Jamal Shedd is 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 the type of young man who, if you have a son, you want him to be like him. And is that not the mo- just if you t- I say th- sometimes these things register with me because I have a college age son. Is that not the most, is that the best compliment you could get as a parent, as a young man, that another person who, another adult who has children and grandchildren, and they deal with you every day. And they say, if I had a son, I'd want him to be like you. Isn't that the best thing you could say about somebody? Yeah, that's good stuff right there. And yeah, he's uh super impressive. Um, yeah. I mean, he's just, he, he's the- like, what I'm telling you is I don't really know Jamal Shedd, yeah. but everybody who knows him glows about him. I mean, that raves about him and it rem- and, and it reminded me of the viral video from a couple of seasons ago. I had forgotten about this. Somebody put it in our mentions, but there's the, the, the game down in Alabama. He's a yeah. sophomore. He's the seventh leading scorer on the team. He's just a guy. He's a sophomore. And this is a Houston team that goes on to the elite eight, but they lose at Alabama in Tuscaloosa. And I think That's it was Rich- ending. Yeah. yeah. And the, I think it was whatever. Yeah. Yeah, a, a player, a Houston player. We don't need to drag up stuff, but um, a Houston player, former Houston player, like takes a garbage can, tumps it over garbage everywhere. It's a bad look. You shouldn't do that. And Jamal Shedd stops, picks up the garbage can and starts picking up the garbage and putting it back in the garbage can. He didn't make this mess. It ain't his problem. Nobody's expecting him to fix it. But he, he sees a he sees a mess. He sees something that was done that should not have been done, and he takes it upon himself to fix. I can't even get my own kids to do that with Capri Sun packages in my own house. And Jamal Shedd did that at Alabama. And at the time, it was just a viral video, just something we watched, and we went, oh, man, what an impressive young man. And then we all moved on because there was another viral video 10 minutes later. But looking back at it with context, that was a – seems to be a great representation of who that young man is of of the young man his parents raised and to see him go from somebody who graduated high school 13 miles from texas's campus but was never seriously recruited by texas and now might be on the verge of being a first team all-american after completing a season sweep of texas it's uh awesome stuff and i'm with you you know we don't have to put together all-american ballots for a little while but if you put one together right now you you probably need to have jamal shed uh, on your first team. Yeah, 13.3 points, 5.8 assists, 3.9 rebounds, 2.3 steals, and and uh, getting it done for Houston. He's their most vital, important player overall, unquestionably. So a good win, a good win for the Cougs. And uh, yes, I would, uh, I'd have them number one right now. But uh, but a, a, a nice little, nice little start to the week here, GP. We've got a whip around to get to. A lot of results from Tuesday night that we want to uh, that we want to spin on here, and we. We're up against it here because GP's got a show. So, Nada, if you wouldn't mind, let's get a quick word from our partners. 
We give thanks to the athletes who took big risks, who beat the odds despite being our balls because of their skin. But to change the status quo, you have to be willing. This is the month we remember. But more importantly, we dream of something bigger. Dead leg, whip us around. <laughs> Didn't know if you were going to say coming out of the break. Well, right. well, I usually do, but then the last time I did, and you talked over me, so I was going to leave it on oh, you. Oh, is that what happened? Okay, <laughs> I think we were, I think we were up against it again. So I was trying to move the show along. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, then, hey, right, here, here hey, we hey, 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 then go. Right, let's go. All right, uh, we'll lead on. This was a Peacock game. Kind of got overlooked a lot on Tuesday night. Iowa seventy-eight, Michigan State seventy-one at the Breslin Center. Iowa uh, trying to just work itself to be in the bubble conversation. Michigan State still in the field, but I don't know in that nine, ten seed range uh, right now. Um, Iowa was down with like six minutes to go. Uh, took a ten nothing run, and uh, that was in the first half. And then they kind of never looked back. Uh, ben Cricky had eighteen points and fourteen rebounds. Really good play out of him. Um, Michigan State just needs to figure it out, GP. Any quick thought? I don't know if you did a hit on this uh, in, well, a, in the studio last night, but this is a weird team that I doubt uh, that I think is going to get to the tournament. I, I think I'm going to have a hard time talking myself into picking Sparty to be a, a team to, to win a game in, in the tournament just because I haven't seen the consistency. No, they look like a team that is going to be good enough to get there because they have an all-time great coach, and he's going to drag them there somehow. Um, but yeah, they're just wildly unreliable. I, um, I'm real disappointed in them. <laughs> I'm upset with them. I, I moved them back into the top 25 and one, like on uh, Monday. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, the resume was the resume. Not, you know what? At certain points, GP, you need to, you need to step away from this whole resume thing and be like, is this team actually one of the 25 best teams in the country? Okay. They were on a three game winning streak including a win over Illinois and they had moved to eight and I want to say at the time it was like 500 in the first two quadrants. It was like, I'm just telling you as somebody who looks for teams every morning to put at the bottom of the top 25 and one, it measured up fine. It made total sense. Evidence being that now I don't believe one person saw it and was like, what are you doing? Cause like, based on computer numbers, based on resume, based on the way they'd been playing it, it made total sense. And then they went out and did what they did. I'm real disappointed in them. Yeah, that's uh, that's obviously a letdown situation for Michigan State. Losing at home to Iowa, mm, that is uh, tough. By the way, Fran McCaffrey, if you were curious, he went on record earlier this week, said he would not be retiring. I think he was actually prompted by a local reporter because I had gotten uh, Izzo on the record about that earlier this season. They were playing Michigan State. And so, uh, Fran, I wasn't expecting him to retire, um, and he's not on the hot seat. They're just kind of, you know, or whatever this season, uh, but a good win for the uh, for the Hawkeyes. Uh, Michigan State, meanwhile, has a home game awaiting on Sunday against Ohio State. I believe that is in that is a C- game on CBS. Uh, let's keep it moving here. A couple of ACC results. <sighs> Virginia, man, I, I, GP. I, I actually, I now maybe I was like you with with Sparty, but you know, week ago, week and a half ago, Virginia was riding an eight game winning streak. It was nineteen and five, ten and three in the ACC. I was like, look who's back. <laughs> that one's on me. I was wrong. Lost at home to Pitt last Tuesday. Got a 49-47 win over Wake Forest. That was, it's a win. That's all I can say. On Monday night, Virginia loses 75-41 to at Virginia Tech. And credit to Mike Young and that team for just getting a win that just has to give this season some sort of meeting. Like, you beat a rival, and you evict them out of the out of the commonwealth of virginia um that's a problematic one uva is still in the field meantime last night how about wake forest so it's let me make sure this is right i think wake forest as of this moment gp wake forest is 21 at ken palm it's 17 and 9 overall one and five in quad one but they destroy pit Credit to John Gasway for this one. Best performance on offense in ACC play in the Ken Palm era for Wake Forest. 1.44 points per possession. So that's going back 25 seasons worth of data. That was the best game on offense Wake Forest has played in league play, period. It was the biggest win for Wake Forest 
over an ACC opponent since Chris Paul was in uniform, GP, uh, back when they beat uh, Florida State by 39 during the 04-05 season. They came out on fire, hit seven of the first 11 threes. Not in the tournament yet. Uh, Virginia's going one way. Uh, Wake's potentially going uh, the other. Any quick thoughts on either of those results? I do think Wake's going to make the NCAA tournament. Um, and it'll be a fabulous story, story given yes, everything yeah. Steve Forbes has been through um, throughout the offseason with his uh, wife. It's well documented. Our friend Seth Davis had an, a, a really nice uh, story about that. You can find it uh, on his Twitter feed. Uh, I'm certain Steve Forbes has also tweeted that. Um, I think they're going to get there. You know, I, I don't know what the brackets would look like. I don't think Jerry Palm has updated his bracket this morning, but Wake was, you know, this time yesterday among the first teams out of the field and obviously adding a big win in such a convincing way that improves all of your computer numbers is is a step in the right direction. For Virginia, that's just rough. I mean, how do you, like, what? How do you lose by that much to, to a sub-50 net team? Um, we talked about it in our early Inside College Basketball show last night before our triple header. And I was just sort of asked, like, you know, what do you make of Virginia? And I just said a bunch of facts in a row. It was just like one of those deals where you just say a bunch of true things in a row and people still take issue with it. Like, I just here's, – here's what I said. You tell me what part of this you take issue with. Okay. Virginia – um, is now at the time they were down to 50th in the net. I think because other stuff happened throughout the night, they're they're 48th in the net, but they are 48th in the net and down to a 10 seed uh, in the tournament, according to Jerry Palm's latest bracket. So I said something along the lines of, you know, Virginia used to be one of the very best programs in the country, but now, you know, you're talking about a terrible offensive team that – has lost two of three, and even the one win in between, they only scored 49 points in that game. In this one and two stretch, they're shooting like 25% from three-point range, and Tony Bennett hasn't won an NCAA tournament game since he won the national championship mm -hmm. in 2019. Um, they have, you know, we didn't have a tournament in 2020. You might have heard about that. Um, they lost to Ohio in the first round of 2021, didn't make it in 2022, lost to Furman, uh, Furman. In, in the opening round last year. So since Virginia won the national championship in 2019, it's zero NCAA tournament wins, 0-2 in the tournament with losses to Ohio and Furman. These are all just true things. Just like, you know, this is my phone. This is a black thing that holds my phone. This is a. This is a pin. Oh, this is a, this is a pin. This is a pin. Okay. Um, you know, and everything I just said is true things about Virginia. You take any any issue with what I what I said? No, it's just uh, it's a bumpy state of affairs right now for UVA. But it's for, here's the thing about Virginia, man. They could win their next four games, and you're just like, all right, there you go, we're back. So. Um, oh, sure. And when they do that, you know yeah. what I'll say? Oh, wow. They bounce back really nicely from that 34 point loss to Virginia Tech. I'll say that when it's time to say that. What do you and trust I'll, more? And I'll say this when it's time to say this. What do you trust more, Virginia or Michigan State? I would say, I would say Virginia. <laughs> yeah, probably. I think I'd say Virginia in that case. I don't know. I don't trust either of them. It's an interesting one. Um, let's keep it moving here. Nova beat Butler 72 62, and they, and they got to have it kind of win for Villanova. Um, Butler's like flirting with that 11 seed territory right now. Nova uh, has a weird resume, but it's it's in the discussion at least. Um, it came out uh, really well in this one. Uh, they there was like <laughs> this was a six. I love the 6:30 tips. I love the 6:30 tips because it staggers and 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 it's it's good for college troops viewership. So this was uh, the first one on the board last night, and there were like 13 lead changes in the first 10 minutes of this game. Uh, really really good stuff. Dixon had 22 points. Didn't miss a foul shot there. It's key for Nova, and we can keep this moving because uh, we are up against it here as usual on Wednesdays with GP's Memphis show coming up. But Nova's got upcoming. It's at UConn. Yikes. Home to Georgetown. Got to win it. And then at Providence, at Seton Hall, home to Creighton. Nova wants to have a tournament case. It's 15 and 11 right now. It's got to go three and two in that stretch, and it's got three road games mixed in there. That's kind of a tall task, but I think it needs to go three and two to go into the Big East tournament with a chance to get in that large bid. We will see on that. Uh, Utah State on our network. 68-63 win over San Diego State. Um, you know, it, the team split the season series, so good on uh, good on Utah State for for going one and one against SDSU. It's alone in first place in the Mountain West this morning, GP. And the reason why I was so impressed with this game was that they had just lost by like twenty 
against Colorado State over the weekend. And to do that, you know, uh, great Osseborg has he came along with uh, with Danny Sprinkle from from uh, Montana State, and they've been he's been tremendous. 17, 17 and change the season per game. He leads the Mountain West in rebounding with more than nine per game. And um, for Danny Sprinkle to have taken this job, and he is cruising. Like I think Utah State's a five seed right now. Parish, um, he's in my. T- I'd have like him. Hurley, uh, maybe Lamont Paris, top three national. I know you talked about this with Boone. I wasn't on the Friday show. We don't need to rehash that conversation again. I don't know if, if Sprinkle came up in that convo, but in light of this win and given Utah State's gaudy record, I think he's in the top three for national coach of the year right now. Um, I have Utah State on Wednesday morning, 19th in the top 25 and one. That translates to a five seed. Yeah. Norlander, we're we're finally seeing things nice. eye to eye. We're seeing each other's sandwiches. We're I love starting to we're starting to see things eye to eye. Um, what Danny Sprinkle's doing is incredible. It is, it too. Like, like what are we like? This is a t- this is a league with likely six NCAA tournament teams, and he's in first place. And he wasn't there last year, as I said last night on CBS Sports Network. Um, the coaching carousel spun around, and there was some real big hires made: Rick Pitino, Ed Cooley, Chris Beard. No coach, no coach in his first year of the job is doing as well of a job as Danny Sprinkles doing at Utah State. That's undeniable. I get a little, you know, I roll my eyes when I see other people talk about this stuff because I saw it like as recently as last night. It's like, oh, and Danny Sprinkles, your national coach of the year. Well, like respectfully, no, he's not. He's probably not. I mean, Utah State. As- no, but he's like on the, he's got to be on the short list, Paris. Didn't say that. Then say that because that's actually true. Say that. Are you yelling at me? I'm just No, not you. Okay. Just other I'll people. What? I, I watch I, mean, I watch ahead. if you wanna if you wanna get it all out, just get let it all out, bud. I see these clips and it like Purdue wins a game and somebody's on Twitter talking about Matt Painter's your coach of the year. And then UConn beats the shit out of Marquette. And somebody's like, well, Dan Hurley's your national coach of the year. And then Utah State <laughs> beats San Diego. He's like, Danny Spring, that's your same dude saying the same thing. So I'm just like, here's the truth. National Coach of the Year right now, I still think it would be Dan Hurley. I would vote for Dan Hurley right now. <laughs> Bold okay. take. Okay. Okay. I would vote for Dan Hurley. Um, uh, there's some, there is something to that, though, yes. Okay. Okay. But should Danny Sprinkle be on everybody's list of legitimate candidates for National Coach of the Year? Absolutely. If you're doing a list of three, let's discuss it. If you're doing a list of five, let's discuss it. Is he actually the National Coach of the Year? Probably not right now. Could he get there? Maybe so. Dusty May did last season. I ain't ruling anything out. But um, either way, that's just me getting caught up on some like. Yeah, you're getting you're getting too yeah. you're getting that's too the, caught you're getting too caught up on it. <laughs> that's me getting caught up on some little stuff. Yes. The thing we can all agree on is um, Danny Rick Sprinkles Patino. Rick Patino is an all time great. Ed Cooley, I believe, is going to do great things at Georgetown. Chris Beard's reputation as a basketball coach is impeccable none of them are doing a better job in their first year at their schools than, than Danny Sprinkle's doing right now at his. Yeah, they didn't return a player who scored a point last season for Utah State, and that's where they are. that is just incredible stuff there. Keep it out, West St. Mary's late game. I was up. I stayed up to the end there. Um, St. Mary's pulls away, beats San Francisco. It's the last unbeaten team in league play uh, is St. Mary's, and uh, you know because of this, St. Mary's has gone from a team that, you know, Looked like it had very little. I mean, very, very little at large chance. At one point, it was three and five. Um, it dropped to eight and six two days before Christmas with a home loss to Missouri State. Hasn't lost since. Beat San Francisco 70 to 66 on Tuesday night. I detailed this in Tuesday's court report. Uh, over the past 10 seasons, every year except one has had at least one team run the regular season table. 17 18 was the only year that we didn't have uh, any team uh not lose a game in league play but otherwise we get this almost every year sometimes we get it with two or even three teams st mary's is our last chance at this remaining on the schedule is san diego at pepperdine and the home to gonzaga we'll see if the gales can keep it up but they are in gp's top 25 and 1 22 and 6 overall 13 and 0 in league play mitchell saxon was awesome he had 20 and 13 in this game he was the best player on the floor st mary's is now your leading win streak uh, team in that race because of UConn's loss. UConn had won 14 in a row. So St. Mary's is 13. Colgate has won 12 in a row. It's already locked up the one seed in the Patriot League. And then South Florida has won 11 in a row. Texas Tech beat T- TCU. A couple of Big 12 results here, GP. Texas Tech beat TCU 82-81. Um, 
this game, T- TCU or Texas Tech, excuse me, they never led by more than four points in the game, but they won. Um, I, this is, a, I wonder if this is now a, a thing. I just, I noticed it afterward. Um, and it's kind of cool. Grant McCaslin has been inviting the students onto the floor to sing the alma mater or the fight song, whatever. Kind of cool. I've never seen it before. And do you they, have to do it after losses too? Uh, I don't. I don't know. If I that, hate that. There is nothing more depressing than watching these okay. losers sing a song after getting beat by fourteen. I hate that. Uh, I would you, transfer. You hate it. it why, why do you care? It's not your school. <laughs> I know, but I feel bad for those guys every time. I just know how I would feel if after I lost, somebody said, "Hey, go sing your stupid song." I'd be like, "What are we doing?" I hate it. I hate. I that. mean, you take the good with the bad. I don't. I don't know, but I thought it's kind of cool. I, I don't think he's going to get out there into the crowd and be like, "Hey." Get your asses on the floor. I don't care that we just lost by seven at home. So I, I think, and you know, the nature is also you're playing at home. You're not going to lose at home all that often. So um, they split the season series though. Texas Tech did uh, by nature getting this win with uh, with TCU. And and if you want a, a sign for why you might want to believe in the Red Raiders, which Grant McCaslin, another first year coach, is doing a pretty good job. He's not that far behind Danny Sprinkle, in fact, uh, from guys uh, in their first uh, seasons in new spots. Texas Tech this year has been able to come back after trailing by 15 against Northern Iowa to win that game, trailing by 12 against Kansas State to win that game, trailing by 17 to win a game against BYU, and now they came back down 10 points with seven minutes to play against uh, against TCU on Tuesday night. So uh, don't count them out. I think that's actually a really, really good quality to have for Texas Tech. Do you have – I figure you've got to have the Red Raiders in your top 25-1, and right, GP? You're wrong. That's an incor- wrong. that's an incorrect assumption. I they're obviously wrong. they're obviously close, and Texas Tech fans will um, obviously take issue with it. They are six and seven in the first two quadrants. They are under five hundred in the first two quadrants. Still, um, I don't have any issue with somebody having Texas Tech on on a ballot, but you're not going to see many teams in the top twenty five and one that are under five hundred in in the first two quadrants. Okay, fair enough. Um, other Big 12 result, BYU gets it done at home. Like TCU, Texas Tech, these two teams have now split the season series. 78-71, a top 25 matchup. Uh, BYU hit at a 1.26 points per possession clip in this game. And strangely enough, I thought this would be a race to 85. It was not. The teams were just efficient. Uh, not an, a super high tempo game. Uh, Baylor was at 1.14 points per possession. Ali Khalifa, he is a joy to watch. 14.7 boards, 7 assists. He is a big man that kind of does it all. He's one of those guys where if you're dialed into the Big 12, you're familiar with them. If you're a BYU fan, if you're them, obviously you're familiar with them. But once BYU starts playing really like even more high-profile games and half their games are not freaking ESPN+, Plus, um, he's a guy whose game is easy to love because he, uh, he exudes a real joy. And when I talked with Pope a few weeks back or a few months back, he was raving about Khalifa's passing ability. It's obvious there. Um, good on BYU. Like t- like Texas Tech, it came back from a, from a deficit. Baylor got out to an 8 nothing lead in this game. Ultimately, it was three-point shooting that I think decided this. BYU, 14-36 to 36 from three. They launch and launch and launch and launch. They're going to be a high. I said this on HQ on Tuesday night. They'll be a high-variance team in the tournament because – they could get cold and get picked off in the first round, and maybe they land as on the sixth line and they get picked off by an 11. That's certainly possible. Or they find fire and you look up and they're in the Elite Eight because their first three tournament games are shooting 44% from, from beyond the arc. So just keep an eye on that with BYU. Baylor was just 5 of 20 from three-point range in this game. Um, tough outing for them, but not the end of the world there. Uh, last whip-around result. I'm done with Texas A&M. I'm officially done. Uh, they get swept by Arkansas. They lose 78-71. Um, Arkansas, obviously, in the midst of just a, a really bad season. And it's just it's a weird one for uh, for Buzz Williams' crew. Um, I thought they were actually going to make a statement here because they were in some bracket projections going into this game. To me, they do not have a tournament case right now. Not that they're like you know completely out of the discussion. I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't have them in the field. And I've just seen this team like just toss away too many chances uh, we get a team or two like this every year and uh, i'm a, i'm officially done with AM. i just they're they're super frustrating super inconsistent and if for example and this would actually be unfortunate for buzz williams's group because they got left out as the as a surprising team a couple years ago if we got to a situation where AM basically keeps us up and is like right there on the edge gp but indiana state beats drake in the mvc title game and drake has like give me drake over an AM. and i think a lot of people would side with that kind of that thought and that thinking I'm I'm real disappointed in them. Yeah, okay. Like like Michigan State. A lot like Michigan State. They have five quadrant three losses. It's five. 
Like like nobody else in the top eighty of them. That's disqualifying. Like you can't. Yeah. I, actually, I think it changed overnight. I think it's four. I should be right. Yeah. They have, I think it's four even now. Four. We're not into March, and they have four. Nobody else in the top eighty of the net has four. All I right. Think only Villanova, which has been up and down, has three. So right. yeah, like four is a big number. Um. So I'm I'm real disappointed in them. <laughs> is, that all, is that all you got for me? Yeah. All right. Well, since uh, since that's all you got here, I might as well just throw it again. Nada. Let's uh, let's get a word from the partners. Wake up to football highlights and news from around the world with the one and only Morning Footy Team. Rise and shine, football fans. Welcome to Morning Footy. Start your all day football craze with Morning Footy, part of the all new Galazzo Network. All right, Dead Leg. You want to look ahead to the next two nights? I I, I yes, I do. Go ahead. No, you 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 got. I say there's something on the tip of your tongue. I wanted to congratulate Nada on his nuptials. He missed the past couple of shows. Thought you were going to congratulate he got me on married something. over the weekend, and uh, and I wanted to at least give him some love and and attention for that. Nada, go ahead, turn on the mic. Turn on your mic. Turn on the mic, man. And uh, yeah, you got uh, you got you don't know thirty seconds to tell us about your wedding. No, Basically, you the about, wedding was really the the wedding was great. Um, almost had a fight at the wedding. We'll talk oh, wow. about that off air. Yeah, no, please, and, no, no. Let's talk about it on air. Yeah. Who, no, 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 no. Who no, no, almost no, no, got into I, a fight? I bet it was I your uncle. I can't reveal the name. It was your I uncle cannot... and the and the bride's dad. <laughs> I wish, I wish it wasn't that. It we was the father of the bride and your cousin. Nope, we're not. It, you have to hey, go. You soon. brought it up. You mentioned it. I'll bring it up off air. I'll tell Hold you guys on. I don't later. think I've ever even been to a wedding where there was almost a fight. So I can't even imagine what leads to this. Alcohol. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, that'll alcohol. do it. That'll I've do been... it. Oh, buddy, I've been to places where alcohol oh, almost led to fights. I'm not going to get I'm not going to get too into the details, but I have I have been to one wedding where there was a very near brawl in the post wedding like get together back at the hotel. And then I've been to a wedding with an extremely awkward situation where uh, it had, had nothing to do with the people getting married, but people attending the same wedding um, who were previously involved romantically with other people. And so you normally keep those people out of your life after the like I've I've been in a couple of awkward scenes, but that but even that did not nearly nearly come to blows there. But uh, very interesting. Any any other good stuff? How glowing was your bride? How amazing was your day? Nada. It was it, like it's a great day, lovely day, except for that one little thing. Except for that one thing, one little thing. It was a great day. Bride is incredibly happy. So that's all that matters at this point. It is all that matters. It all it is all that matters. Well, congratulations, buddy. And yes, Nada had not been producing the past two shows. Uh, I was out on the road on Friday. Uh, we don't need to go down this road at all. But apparently, the Friday show was a little bit of an adventure to get off the runway, but they, but you and KB got it done. Nada, we're thrilled to have you back here. Congratulations on your nuptials. nuptials. Congrats to you and your bride. And uh, I know you've got a honeymoon coming later this year. Uh, we appreciate you, and that's uh, that's really, really good stuff. I know Parrish is privately extremely pissed that he was not invited to the wedding. We'll deal with that off air. I, just want, I thought you I th you were like, I want to offer congratulations, and I thought you were going to congratulate me about something. And then it, <laughs> it, it hurt my feelings a little bit when you skipped me and went straight to nada. Well, the man got married. I think he's – I think I he's mean, good. I got married one time too. Yeah. <laughs> True, true story here. Invited Paris to my wedding. He said no. So good time. I did. I had. I had to work. Yeah. yeah no. I, re I regret I'm that. Sure I, you I regret that. Me. That's that's a regret I I carry around with me. I'm I'm as disappointed in myself as I am A and M in Michigan State. If I'm being honest. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's all right. I that's only I only loathe time. them to compensate for my self loathing. There have been uh, some compliments on Nada being uh, one of us, obviously, but now you don't even have to worry about that anymore. You're officially, uh, you're officially on the hook. You know, you're officially taken off the market. So there you go. Um, games: St. John's at Georgetown, seven Eastern on Wednesday night. Real quick on this, Patino's. We because we responded in real time on Sunday. This became a now. Here, this is the deal. You hire Rick Patino to St. John's, you're going to get all the attention. Good, bad. You go on losing streaks. They're going to talk about you on national shows. This was topic number two, I believe, on PTI. On Tuesday night, after PTI didn't have a Monday show, that's how much how much uh, shelf life this thing had. Now, Patino sat down with a couple of uh, beat writers, Roger Rubin, Zach Braziller, basically didn't apologize for what he said. Um, we don't need to dive into all of his words and his follow up. I'll just say this real quick, GP. Um, Patino got blowback for what he said. Knowing Patino like we do, 
I remain entertained and appreciative of a guy that's going to be able to say what's on his mind at a press conference. And then I want more coaches willing to speak their mind. It's not the best idea to continually throw your players under the bus. I get all that, but I'm, I wasn't, I don't know, GP. I, th- I saw some folks kind of being like, what's Patino doing? This is going to kill him for transfers. I'm not convinced that's the case in the NIL era period. And I didn't have like this major issue with him doing this, but I was, I was intrigued by the, uh, by the response. This was more widespread than I anticipated. Yeah, like people – that's another thing people do all the time is they latch onto one thing and they say, but how's this guy going to recruit? And then he's like, you know, taking a selfie with a five-star McDonald's All-American. Like, remember, how's Chris Beard going to recruit? And, you know, it'll be it'll be fine. You know, it'll be fine. How's Rick Pati- – how is a mother ever going to send their son to play for Rick Patino? I don't know. They will. You know, they will. And they still will. That was the one, you know, after the Louisville scandal. It was like that was going on at Louisville under Rick on Rick Patino's watch. How would a parent ever send their child to play for Rick Patino? I don't know, but they will. Just don't worry. It's not as big of a deal as I, parents of basketball players, you know, in some cases aren't going to care about the stuff that uh, I guess some people with Twitter accounts think they're going to care about. So, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it interesting game just because it'll lead to Rick being in front of a microphone again uh, but keep an eye on Georgetown I know they're not very good but you know St. John's is very slow laterally they are. <laughs> and that could be a problem tonight I don't have I don't have the lateral situation for Georgetown but I tell you this I am going to be dialed in on on the lateral quickness of <laughs> Georgetown. Like, I can't you know, wait to watch right. Chris Ledlam try to move his feet <laughs> <laughs> That is where we're at. Someone in the comments is, is correct. Isaac is saying if this was during the NFL season, it wouldn't have made headlines. It would have on the show, but you're right. But that's the nature of them not being football. Hey, that's the deal, man. The, the, the comments landed when they landed. It's Patino. And the fact that we are going to we are going to check in and just <laughs> primary television, St. John's Georgetown, <laughs> how these dudes look and move side to side. <laughs> uh, just incredible. Let's go real quick because GP's got to get out of here. Duke at Miami is your seven Eastern ESPN tip. Florida at Alabama. That one's. That's kind of intriguing. Bama should be should win that game. Seven Eastern ESPN two, but Florida's looking good as of late. We'll see if Alabama can score a hundred on another conference opponent. Um, Ole Miss at Mississippi State nine Eastern ESPN two. Uh, more of a urgent situation than you might realize for for the for the running rebels of Mississippi there. Um, but that's one to watch uh, on our air. CBS Sports Network. Providence at Xavier. GP of course will be in studio again. Uh, Providence on the road. Bubble team supreme. I think I like Xavier to uh, to get that one done, even shorthanded Xavier, and then a really good one again, Mountain West, one after another after another. Colorado State at New Mexico, 10 Eastern. Stay up late. Watch it on CBS Sports Network. GP will be in studio. And then Thursday, only two, one, two games to tell you about, in my opinion. SMU at FAU, 7 Eastern, ESPN2. SMU's been playing well as of late. Owls cannot mess around, man. Can't drop that game at home. And then uh, best game of the night, you got to stay up late. 11 Eastern, FS1. FS1, not Pac-12 Network. Washington State at Arizona. Keep an eye on it. Tommy Lloyd just got a contract extension. Arizona is broke and and tens upon tens of millions of dollars in debt, but they rallied uh, donor money to be able to secure a contract extension for Tommy Lloyd. Not that he was going anywhere. They also have a new AD coming in. They plucked the Missouri athletic director to take over at Arizona later this year. That is your Wednesday, Thursday TV schedule. If Washington State wins alone atop the Pac-12 standings, biggest game in Washington State basketball history since it's been a minute. Literally, they played in the NCAA tournament in 2008, probably. Yeah, feels that way. Yeah, no, yeah. that's uh, that's good stuff. Yeah. That's uh, that's remember late tip on Thursday, but uh, depending on how how that goes, that might be leading the show on Friday. That could be what we're leading with on Friday morning, as always. We'll see. Shouts to Devin Downey. Shouts to Chester, South Carolina. Shouts to Terry MF and Teagle legend, Huck Larnell. Thank you guys once again for watching, listening to the Ion College Basketball Podcast. If you're not subscribed, please go subscribe anywhere you subscribe to podcasts, including Apple, Spotify. More of us than there are of them. That should be reflected in the comments. We'll talk to you again on Friday. Till then, take care. <laughs>